Welcome to the Bitcoin Zodiac, the podcast that explores the intersection of finance and astrology, where we use a combination of spirituality and logic to help us connect the dots in the markets. Hosted by Corinne Florence and Claire Marinan, who both come from a diverse background, bringing with them a wealth of knowledge and experience in the realms of astrology, cryptocurrency, trading, philosophy, investment strategy, and of course, Bitcoin. In each episode, we explore the economics of the markets following the evolution of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency through each moon cycle and astrological transit. Join us on this journey as we explore the intersection of these two worlds that are often thought to be at odds with one another, finance and astrology. Whether you're a seasoned crypto investor, a day trader, or just starting to dip your toes into the world of Bitcoin and blockchain, Bitcoin Zodiac is the podcast for you. So sit back, relax, and come and expand your consciousness with us as we explore the world of the financial markets through an astrological lens. Good evening. Good morning. How are we doing? I'm amazing. Thank you. How are you? Good. I'm good. It's been a roller coaster. These fun eclipses, Mercury retrograde, Oof. all of the above. Yeah. I think we really need a shirt that says blame it on Mercury. <laughs> did, did I send you the reel that my friend made about we all have those friends that um that blame everything on the moon? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean she's That's hilarious. Me. <laughs> she's hilarious. She's an amazing like comedian. I don't even know if she's professionally a comedian, but she's so funny. She absolutely should be. But like I was like, yeah, that's me. But honestly, she was so good. Yeah. I don't know how these people live life with without like you know, people that say to me, I don't believe in astrology. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, how can you not? It, it's so crazy. The alignment. The alignments are so real. It's so wild. I know. It's been it's been a lot. And I think that Bitcoin is also representing that, but we'll we'll circle back to that soon. <laughs> how how but, was um, the eclipse for you? Like what came up for you? Yeah. So for me, it's um it was definitely a lot of like health related stuff, which um, you know, nothing super serious, but I just received a lot of confirmations on things that had that I had been feeling. Mm-hmm. And I think that was a big sigh of relief. And also a friendly reminder that you are your own best doctor, you are your own best coach, you are your own best everything. And when you really do listen to yourself and call it intuition, call it that gut feeling like you really know. And so that was a really beautiful reminder of uh, you really know yourself best when you stop and listen. So it was nice to get the the 3D world reality confirmations, <laughs> you know, and, um, and then also a lot of and it's been interesting because the more I like talk to people, even some of like of my students and stuff, like I, I get a lot of the same themes and mm-hmm. one of them has been a lot of um, exhaustion, a lot of people just being like, I'm trying to go, I'm trying to do the thing. And I had scheduled to do this, but then I ended up sleeping throughout the whole day, or I just felt like lying there and being and then it leads into the guilt and the shame because I'm not doing and I'm not performing and this world wants me to perform all the time, but I just want to take 50 naps. And I think that's been a really big reoccurring theme too. And I felt a lot of that the weekend of the eclipse, like Mm -hmm. I even had friends staying with us and I was literally just knocked out. Like I would be chilling in the lounge room all chatting so unlike me because what I did was completely fall asleep while we were all chatting whereas I'm normally the super chatty one so that was really Miss Leo uh, yes it's very Leo we just love to chat (laughs) life of the party yeah so wow I mean that is just so your body just saying I need I need a break I need to take this time like 100% wow yeah so that was that was interesting. 
how about you how was it for you yeah it was a it was yeah. a whole, it was a whole thing I mean um it started off amazing. Like I had the week before I had the most, the best trading week I've ever had, like ever. And it was like oh such God. a milestone moment. I was just like, wow, like, you know, um, so yes. I was like, yeah, this is amazing. And then yeah. I had a friend visit me from Dubai, um, a really good friend of mine. And we just had such a blast. Like it was so lovely to see him after so long. Mm -hmm. We just chatted and chatted and chatted and drank tequila and, you know, chatted about wow. things we have. I haven't even thought about for maybe a decade, you know, and just like really good Love time that. like that. And then a couple of days after the eclipse, I mean, eclipse energy is very weird, you know, because it really like it brings to the surface, it's this revealing energy and it brings to the surface things that have probably been hidden from you or unseen for a really long time. And um, I know that you, this obviously hasn't been an easy period of time for you. So I'm sending you lots of love, lots of healing and lots of strength yeah. um, during this time. And anybody else that's been going through it because eclipses really you know, they, they hurt when, when things come to light that we don't expect it, it hurts no matter how prepared you are for it. No matter how much we say, cool, eclipse season is coming, which <laughs> rug is about to be pulled from under me. Like, yeah. you know, um, no matter how prepared you are, it, it still hurts. And, um, yeah, yeah. no, it, it's not been easy. I've, I probably cried more in the last week. Oh, love the love heart. <laughs> I probably cried more in the last week. That's why my eyes are so puffy. But um, yeah. You look amazing anyway. I didn't even <laughs> notice. It. I came to terms in a way that like, this is just what life is. You know, we grow some, we get pruned in another area. We grow <sighs> some more in another area. We get pruned, you know, this is like, this is life, you know? And so even though these yeah. things are tough, um, yeah, we survive and we transcend them. And some of the key takeaways that I want um, other people, like I, I know a lot of people actually who've been really going through it. This eclipse season, you know, one of my very, very close friends is going through a very complicated heartbreak, like very deep heartbreak. And, you know, a lot of people are navigating some stuff, you know, it is the closing of cycles. It is, you know, and it is painful. Um, but yeah. Some of the things I want people to take away is number one, like don't let other people dismiss or invalidate your feelings or try to talk you out of and, or gaslight you about how you're feeling, you know, um, especially if you are a sensitive person, like, you know, I've been told my entire life, I think you've had the same Corinne where it's just like, Oh, you're too sensitive. You know, you need to, to get a thicker skin. You you're overreacting. Stop you, overreacting. Yeah, exactly. And you know, know, the um, the the real honest thing about that is, is like I've even had conversations with my mother about it. Cause I'm like, why, why did you do that to me? And she's she said, like, I I just was worried like that the world would crush you if you're too sensitive. But she even acknowledged that she's like, but now like I can see that that is literally your superpower. And so anybody yeah. that feels that way, you know, it if you're a sensitive person that that is an intuitive person, like since I was a child, I've always felt more than other people feel. I've always seen more than other people see. I've always understood and just known stuff that other people don't, you know, and um, not everybody is going to understand that. Even yourself, sometimes you don't understand that. But um, I think also we are in a period of time where those like intuitive gifts are heightened. Like I feel that in myself and I don't personally think for me anyway, I don't feel like it's like my spidey sense is stronger. I just really feel that the veil between the seen and the unseen is less dense than it has been previously. And so I think a lot of people are going to notice this, like you're going to notice things that you didn't notice before. But it's one of those things also, funnily enough, we was kind of talking about this before we started recording, 
but like I know everybody has probably had this experience where they just have this gut feeling about something like something's off when you meet someone immediately and yeah. um but you can't like I haven't I haven't mastered this yet personally but you can't like do anything or say anything because they haven't done anything yet and you almost yes. rationalize it and go oh, well, they haven't done anything. Like you've got, you've got to give them a chance or whatever. And look, red flag, red flag. And, mm -hmm. and then it's like, it comes back around and you're like, okay, I knew this all the time. And I think that that's when I get most upset and upset with myself. Cause I'm like, I knew this, you know, but um, what about you? Like, how do you navigate that? Because it's like that, that spidey mm -hmm. sense goes off immediately sometimes when you meet someone, but it's like, oh, I've got, I've got to give people a chance, you know, and, and give, <laughs> they yeah. always, it always ends up showing itself, you know? It always does. But you know, what's so funny is that, I mean, I definitely relate to the my whole life, people have always told me you're too sensitive, you're overreacting, you get emotional too much. Um, so I definitely relate to that. And I do realize that that is my superpower. And I'm definitely continuing to step more and more into that. On the other side of when I meet people, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie, I and maybe this is my Leonis. I'm like, yay, everybody's my best friend. Mm -hmm. And if anything, I had to learn to not make everybody my best friend so quickly. Yeah. And um, luckily, I have been blessed and protected in my life by, well, my mother, majority of my life, even though I hate to admit it sometimes, <laughs> she is the one that, you know, every time a friend or a boyfriend would like come over and she would be like, mm, I don't know about this one. <laughs> and she would have the spidey tingles, right? Oh. Whereas, um, and she's always proven me wrong. And now it's my <laughs> husband. And at the start, I would fight him against mm -hmm. this stuff because I would always be like, you know, whether like, not like you're jealous or I'd be like, oh, like, you know, like stop. Like you're, I maybe even fell into those moments of like, you're exaggerating. And I would put mm, excuses. I would defend others. Yeah. Until then, even there, he proved me right every time. So now I'm learning to step more and more into that. But, and for everybody listening, maybe you guys don't have that sense, that immediate sense, but you have somebody in your life that's close to you and loves you and cares for you, that they have that and that's their superpower. And I've just learned, like, I don't question it anymore. Like if Alex is like, hey, babe, I don't know about this person. I'm like, no worries. Got you, babe. Like, you know, we're a team on that. But I have instead learned over time that as the red flags arise, you need to be present with the red flags and you need to like see them and be like, okay, I can't justify this for this person. There's yeah. only so many times and already one red flag. And I've actually, this has been coming up for me during this Mercury retrograde and eclipse as well. It's like, if the red flag is there, don't ignore it, like embrace it, just recognize it, jot it down and maybe start to shift your energy. And yeah, yeah. it's more arms yeah. things. Like, I mean, I, we're, we're not telling everybody to be like, go out and be looking for red flags or go out no. and be rude to people or mean to people. Like definitely not yeah. like that's not it at all, but it's more just like trust that and just, you know, I think you and I are the same. Like we really give so much of ourselves instantly because we kind of love, yes. I love those kind of friendships. I love those relationships. And it's like, yeah, we give too much of ourselves too quickly. And especially if there yeah. is a bit of a red flag, it's like, you know what, I'm going to like go slow with this for sure. So interesting. And I also, I also feel like this is an empath thing, you mm -hmm. know, I think that empaths, we naturally also, uh, we want to like love and care for. And when we see the red flags, it's so easy for us to justify it because we're like, oh, but they're healing and they're going through things and they're hurting. And 
I just, you know, sometimes we even fall into that savior, like I'm going to save them. And it's like, no, that is not our job. Um, so yeah, empaths, we feel you, but I promise that there's so many positive sides to being an empath. (laughs) I wouldn't want to superpower. 1000%. I wouldn't want to be any other way. Honestly, I really would, especially in this age. Like I think that we are built for this bring it on but just some yeah. quick sort of things like I I also yeah. recognize that like even this eclipse season or even with what's going on with Bitcoin and crypto at the moment that some people may be like in the fields because yes. there is that element of like you know especially like okay Bitcoin has had had a pullback now everybody listening to the Bitcoin Zodiac for the last couple of episodes will be chilling because we you know we've been waiting for for pullbacks to happen like we know we know it's coming but for anybody who's this is their first cycle in crypto um welcome this is the roller coaster <laughs> that is crypto. Sure it is. um but i want to sort of honor the feelings of people who maybe are in a lot of alts in their portfolio and are like waking up to their portfolio being 40 percent down one morning you know this is a horrible feeling again it's that same eclipse energy of like rug being pulled out from under you you know and so how do we navigate that because to be honest when you feel pain like um like pain is information no matter what kind of pain like if it's sadness if it's hurt if it's anger if it's you know all of these uncomfortable emotions this information and um when it comes to your crypto portfolio, th- there's information there. Like maybe you are too heavy in meme, meme coins, you know, and um, you need to Red read flag. something like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, obviously not people listening to the Bitcoin Zodiac. We oh. are <laughs> obviously not. We have amazing obviously. balanced portfolios. But, um, you know, or or when someone betrays you, someone lets you down, you know, something like that this is information and we have this tendency to internalize it. Like it, you know, oh, I'm such an idiot. You know, my whole portfolio is meme coins. Oh, I'm such an idiot. I didn't listen, you know, I didn't recognize that about that person. But like often the information is not about you and your value. The information is about that person, you know, it's about them and their character. And so it's like, what do you do with that information? And like, how do we process that? properly because we don't want to waste these uncomfortable emotions you know we want to release them and one of the first things there's really two parts to this that are both equally important and the first thing is to really feel your feelings fully like the Mm. only way out of the discomfort the uncomfortable feelings the only way out is through you know if we try to avoid them or we try to block them out or we you know, go to a party and, you know, ignore them or we binge watch stuff on Netflix and try and bypass this, like whatever, whatever it is that you do to try and avoid feeling those emotions, like we're really just prolonging the pain. And probably instead of going through, we're doing this like massive detour and creating a whole heap more problems along the way. So it's like really feeling those emotions and allowing them to sit with them, allowing yourself to be with them. And that I promise you, they dissipate so much more quickly when you actually like honor them. And the thing is, if you don't, and you do suppress them, you do bypass them, it sets up something like they can sit in your, they get trapped in your body. And sometimes they can be trapped in your body in the form of stiffness or illness or something like that. Or they're in your nervous system, they're in your psyche, and you become like very hyper vigilant and triggered. So anything that even closely resembles that kind of scenario again, your subconscious without you even being aware of it is going to go straight into fight or flight mode and you're just going to live in this reactive space all the time it's just no way to live feel the emotions let them go the second part of it is really important to don't stay there you know like feel your sadness but don't build a home there you know there has to be this desire to move through and to move out of the other side, to go to a place of grace, to find a place of forgiveness. Um, 
you know, and a lot of times the first person that you need to forgive is probably going to be yourself. You're looking, <laughs> you know, we've had this conversation yep. before for sure. And um, we're already hard on ourselves. Absolutely. Really. Are. And yeah, if you're looking at like 40% down on your portfolio and you're like, I'm an idiot, I'm doing this. You know what? Forgive yourself. Like there's, there's plenty of room to grow. Don't worry about it. But also, yeah, just, just learn those lessons and, and don't, don't stay there beating yourself up. Don't stay there like in your sadness oh people betray me nobody cares about my feelings everybody hurts me you know you can indulge in that for like five minutes but like let that go and yeah. um you know when I say forgiveness I also don't mean like for pretend nothing ever happened and that that's not yes. actually what forgiveness is you know it's um it's really not there are going to be sometimes you're going to see things about people um, that you you can't unsee, you know, but you can still forgive them and release that tension between you and that person, that energetic tension between you and that person and um, yeah. and release it. So, yeah, I hope that helps wow. anybody that's going through some stuff during this time. I've been going through it. No one's immune to it. Um, it's part of life, you know, it really is. It really is. No, thank you so much for sharing those. I think they're amazing tips, um, you know, even in, in particular, well, in every aspect of life. But when we look at especially this period of time during trading and investing, this is just a really great time. And again, this is what eclipses brings to us lessons. Mm. So it like what I love to do during this time or any time that I catch myself like down or in my thoughts is start to write it out, you know, start to write out what is it that what was the choice maybe that you made and uh, what is the lesson there? And next time, how are you going to uh, respond to a similar scenario? Um, and I love what you said about just feeling things. Mm -hmm. We are in such a society in a world that tells us to ignore our feelings, to push them aside. And I actually really feel for men like, I yeah. think especially for men, this is, you know, I, I, I never want to like coach men when it comes to this sort of thing, because I feel like men get to teach men this, this side of things. But yeah. like, I think it's so important for a man to feel, I think it's actually really sexy when a man feels yeah. and when they fully embody their emotions and like, if they're sad, they're going to be sad. If they're going to be angry cool be angry but then like the processing of the why did I get angry how did I re react how am I going to respond next time like it's so beautiful to see a man um and let's be real trading brings out especially crypto it really brings out the shadow of all of us and so it's just especially when your portfolio is looking red. Those trades are getting liquidated. It's just such a beautiful time to be in your feels. But like you said, don't stay there. Continue forward yeah. and um, find new ways of said. responding. I love what you said about men as well, because I also, yeah, like it's hot, you know, for men to feel their feel. Yeah. But they also... I think men also do that in such a different way to women, you know, and exactly. like, I think, I don't know. I think society is really hard on men or has been recently, like, you know, and it's almost this kind of like revenge thing, like the patriarchy, like no one's denying that that existed. Absolutely. Women have been oppressed for a really long time. We all know why divine feminine energy is so powerful, but so powerful. It doesn't make us any better to like hate men or be hard on men. And um, I think our society has been really hard on men and has not allowed them to feel and almost shamed them for having feelings, number one. But also like they don't feel in the same way as women. And that's like, okay. <laughs> Like that's exactly. Bad. And so it's like, exactly. can we just like let men be men and women be women? Like, is that okay? Can we just, do, can we do that? And can we move in that direction, please? Because I, I think that would be really great. But um, yeah, yeah. Agreed. agreed. But we're all, we're all getting there. Mm -hmm. We're all uh, a val, uh, a val, 
uh, evolving and we'll we'll get there like we were talking about before we started recording good wins in the end so it will all come together it's all gonna work out guys <laughs> um and you know i think a lot of the bitcoin zodiac listeners they probably are like oh this eclipse my portfolio being down yeah. no problem i'm just stacking sats we were waiting for this pullback i'm yeah. stacking sats so i love yeah. you for, for for being there with that and um i hope that we, I hope our podcast and somehow like ease the um the volatility exactly. for you, you know? Exactly. I love that. And you know, so when just to really quickly touch on Bitcoin, um, circling back to what we spoke about last episode with the solar eclipse in Aries. So that was a new moon marking local tops. Um, not gonna lie, like we we did talk about how very positive the astrology looked for bitcoin mm -hmm. and we also said we just don't know how positive it could be or not be because of mercury retrograde like mercury retrograde is really a time and this is why i know so many traders that don't even follow astrology but they're gonna put mercury retrograde in their charts yeah. because it's such a challenging time and it's such like an unexpected time where in particular bitcoin just gets so affected by mercury retrograde so we can do as much forecasting as we want but there's always going to be surprises. And I really feel like with this Mercury retrograde, it just really, um, it really held Bitcoin back. And it just goes to show with, and maybe I'll just share my screen so we can look at the astrological chart at the moment that we have up here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, I mean, whenever... we did also say that there would be volatility, you know, we did, yes, have, we, we uh, did, the moon, we did have that move up quite um we did you know exactly. I wouldn't say it was necessarily a substantial move up but it was quite a quick move up you know and it so, was. and then we're getting volatility to the downside though so this pre-halving it's it's just it's choppy and like okay. you said you know mercury retrograde does really push down on that kind of like upward movement it, you know, it feels like a bit of a cap um yeah cap to get through um yeah, would you mind being uh, allowing me to share the screen, please? Sure. Yeah, and you're right, absolutely. Like that day was extremely, like it was very positive. On the eighth of April, um, you know, I I know many of us were sitting there being like, okay, is this going to be the the you know the break above and that creation of that new all time high to break that previous high but it just didn't but we can see that it was quite a positive um period of time coming up to that day which mm -hmm. was the 8th of april and then afterwards we just started our descent down to the full moon in scorpio which is where we're headed to now um and there was and i remember us talking about yeah lots of volatility bit of yuckiness here in between you know even the coming days for those that um are watching you know we're recording this on the 16th of april um we just have some not so beautiful days coming up um and that's just Mercury retrograde. We do have Mercury retrograde until the 26th of April. Um, and we have some pretty cool astrology in between there, which um, we can we can start to chat on. And I think that the main thing to really talk about or circle back to is when we spoke about um, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus. So... Um, as you guys just saw there, we have it dated for the 20th of April, and that's the the day that it's going to be at 100%. Mm -hmm. But that is already starting from the, from April 18th to the 26th. So that's beautifully aligned with ending with that Mercury retrograde to the 26th and that energy playing out. So we spoke about how Taurus rules and governs bull markets. It um, governs Wall Street as well as the trading of gold bullion. Jupiter is, on the other hand, known to expand everything it touches. It's got everything to do with wealth. And Uranus is all about technology, about breakthroughs and even earthquakes. So 
that's when we just know anything that is associated with with Uranus, where like, hold your horses, like something's about to come up. Now, also during this time, Taurus, and there's a lot of Taurus energy coming up as well. Like I'm going to talk a little bit about Venus in Taurus as well coming up. Um, but Taurus also symbolizes values yeah. and it's very much about, you know, at this time is like, what do we stand for and what do we absolutely like not compromise on? So maybe that's a good little reflection also for, for everybody and their feelings around Bitcoin during this time, what we absolutely not compromise on, even though while they're essentially trying to ch shake us out of the market, but we'll <laughs> circle back to that too. Um, and what's been really cool about uh, seeing a lot of astrologers talk about this Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus, mm. um, there's so much coming up from like history in the past. And one post that really stood out to me um, is by Jessica Adams, who's an astrologer, an Australian astrologer. And she dove into a lot of the history of this conjunction and it led me down this massive rabbit hole. But just to kind of like summarize what I read and what maybe are some of the themes that we can see being repeated in history is so in May 1858, during a, again, Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus, it was a time when Russia and China signed a Treaty of Agen. And this was an agreement that established significant trade ties between Russia and China. But it's also where Russia took by territory from China over 2 million miles of territory. And that is still a very important treaty that started back in, again, 1858, that's still being felt in 2024. And then fast forward in 1941, there was another Uranus-Jupiter conjunction in Taurus. And this was during World War II when Hitler's deputy, known as Rudolf Hess, he flew to the UK with a proposal from Hitler to Churchill, um, essentially to end the war, where um, Britain would align with Germany against Russia. And that was a period of time where Churchill actually denied that. And what's interesting, side note of all of that, is that Hess, so Rudolf Hess, he actually had an astrologer that told him this would be a good period of time to go to make this agreement because of that conjunction. But it was around the time of a full moon. And Jessica Adams, this astrologer, was like, if this had been a good astrologer giving advice, they would have said, no, don't go because you can't go on the full moon. Do it after the full moon. So but it's just really cool to see how even back then they used astrologers to pinpoint dates throughout the war when maybe they would go and do these deals. Um, so I thought that these themes were really interesting, seeing what's been going on in the world yeah. and what we are continuing to see emerge in the world. Um, and it's just really significant, significant themes that I continue to watch even today in 2024 a lot of astrologers are talking about okay get ready for some sort of surprise move from maybe one of these countries that we have just spoken about and that we're seeing reoccurring in these themes mm -hmm. um in history but um yeah your thoughts on that or anything else that you have with specifically the jupiter conjunction with yeah. uranus I mean, very, very interesting, those um, those dates that you were bringing up and things like that, and, and just looking at what has kind of been going on in the last week in the world. And I think one of the key things for me with Taurus as well, I mean, I kind of, like, I love Taurus energy. To me, it's very, like, nourishing. It's very luxurious. It's like yes. um, old money aesthetic before this TikTok trend. Um, you know, this kind of, this, this kind of feels, but I think the key word that you said was values. And I think that the really obvious thing that's going on in the world is people are expressing their values. But I think, I mean, I rarely post anything on my own private Instagram. 
Um, and the only time, like I share the stuff, obviously Bitcoin Zodiac, but then I rarely post anything else. But sometimes like when I see like a hundred Instagrams that are stupid, then I just feel the need to like say something about it. And I think people need to realize like and understand that the incentives in our world are not really aligned to peace. There are far more incentives and greater power structures that are aligned to war and, um, you know, strengthening the military industrial complex and all of these sorts of things. Um, you know, they, they, um, a strength and not in times of peace They're they're stronger and more powerful and make more money in times of war and yes. I think we are at a point in society where we need to question because I don't think this aligns with any ordinary person's values um but I think we all need to ask ourselves the question like when is enough is enough and how how are we going to move forward and begin to dismantle some of these enormous structures, enormous power structures in our world that just do not align with the values of the majority? Um, and I don't have any answers to that, to be honest, because I think that it's oh. like such a huge, like, um, you know, deeply ingrained, meshed um, system that I, I don't really know how how that moves forward. But um I think that there will be some kind of escalation. I have a feeling, and people are not going to like me saying this, but I do feel like that Israel um, and being pushed along by um, America, supported by America, are goading Iran into conflict. You know, they um, took out, a lot of people are ignoring, especially the mainstream media, is that um, Israel took out, I think it was in Syria, um, the Iranian embassy or an Iranian base or something like that in Syria. And that what just happened was actually like a response to that. And it was a warned response. We're going to be doing this, you know, so that basically it was minimal casualties. But it does feel like there's this goading to war and it's just feeding that never ending war machine, endless war machine, which is just horrific. But the Jupiter... Yes. Uranus conjunction in Taurus, I actually think is very, very positive um, yes. for Bitcoin. I think the timing is insane. I think it's a day after the Bitcoin halving. Um, yes. So I think it's beautiful. And I think it's also going to be a positive time for gold too. Because Taurus to me is always very gold orientated. And um, it's also very much about the things of the earth. And so, you know, gold is very much about that. So I see it as a positive thing. Um, so I think so too. I think so too for gold. I think so too for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is, and again, we, we touched on this last episode for anybody that missed it, go back and check it out where we spoke a bit more about the Bitcoin halving and this transit around that. It's just like there can be, there can only be so many coincidences when we see the astrology line up with something like the Bitcoin halving to the date. I mean, again, this energy plays out from the 18th through to the 26th and the Bitcoin halving is happening smack bang in the middle. Like it's, it's just so beautiful. Yeah. I love it. It's amazing. And look, I think yeah. when Jupiter and um, Uranus meet in Taurus, it's this blend of expansive and disruptive energy so it it obviously directly impacts everything that's ruled by Taurus. So um, notably, like financial assets and and physical assets too. So this yeah. construction, you know, I I think it's I think it's good for Bitcoin. Again, maybe I'm I'm expecting volatility till like after yeah. the Bitcoin halving, like after the Bitcoin halving, after Mercury retrograde, after all of this choppy kind of astrology. Um, so it could be volatile, but I, overall, I think it's very, very positive and a, a, a very positive shift. Yeah, I think so too. And, you know, if we even think about what's happened in the world, because really what happened this past Saturday that sparked the initial drop in Bitcoin was everything that's happening, uh, in, in the Middle East. And I feel like it's a bit of a repeat of what happened October 7th. Yeah. October 7th, we saw pretty much the exact same thing, you know, 
everything started happening uh, again in, in Gaza back then. And, um, and you saw gold, Bitcoin drop because what happens when we are in a moment of fear uh, mm -hmm. and that's the majority of people react or yeah, react in that way with fear. And you're like, oh my God, World War Three is happening. I need to get liquid. So what do we do? We go and start taking profits. We start taking cash out. We start trying to get safe security immediately. But what we saw back then in October 7th is that after that dip, after people panicked, they were like, hold on, where's my safe haven? And that's when people started going back into gold and into Bitcoin. And we saw Bitcoin go up from there. So I think it's also in that sense, a similar scenario, um, you know, here in America, it's yesterday was, you know, the due date for taxes. So a lot of people had some taxes uh, to pay and so probably also needed to take cash out and there's also some okay. stuff going on in my side of the world as well. We just mm -hmm. had the announcement of like the Hong Kong Bitcoin and Ethereum ETF. Mm -hmm. So we always expect some shenanigans around there to try and shake, you know, shake retail out of the market and, mm -hmm. um, you know, push that price down. It's, it's the exact same thing we saw with the Bitcoin um, ETF launch as well. It was very much like a, a buy the rumor, sell the news kind of event. And, um, you know, but overall, it's a it's a really good thing. It's like this, it, an insane amount of wealth concentrated in Hong Kong. And um, so it's actually wow. a really big deal for Bitcoin and crypto. So that's um, really interesting as well. It is. And I think also then continuing on just these Taurus themes, mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned, and this is jumping a little forward because this is going to be on the 29th of April, um, Venus is going into, into Taurus. And we know Venus to be the planet of love and beauty and finances. And it also now comes into the sign of Taurus, which is, you know, Venus and uh, Taurus is uh, Venus is the ruling planet of Taurus. And so even Taurus has that energy and that vibe of luxury and beauty. And, you know, Taurus is all the beautiful things in life, but also finances. Um, and I think also something with, with Taurus is very much like stability. It wants uh, stability, um, but wants to ignite economic activity too. So from a bit more of like an emotional side of things, or even like the way that we might be feeling, um, this uh, Venus in Taurus encourages us to seek pleasure, stability, and comfort in the physical world. This can manifest as a heightened appreciation for nature, art, and sensor sensory experiences. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, there's an increased desire for security in relationships, Maybe that's where we go and assess some of those red flags and we go and shift to things that are a bit more secure, yeah. um, as well as a preference for long lasting connections. People also tend to be more romantically inclined towards commitment. So men, gentlemen, this is a great time for proposals and after Mercury retrograde um, <laughs> and to value loyalty. Um, as well during this period. Whereas from an economic standpoint, Venus and Taurus could signal a period of just stability um, or even growth and expansion, especially in sectors related to luxury goods, arts, beauty, and real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, Taurus values quality and sustainability. And so there may be a boost in industries that cater to these preferences. Um, but really it's around looking for things that are high quality and that have longevity. So Bitcoin gold, guys. Um, and in particular for cryptocurrencies, it is a time that you might want to really look for those stabler coins. So I'm not saying stable coins, but maybe those more well-established assets over the more speculative and volatile ones. And even if we look at, you know, the, the market cycles and phases from when the money shifts from Bitcoin to Ethereum to altcoins to meme coins, we're very much now seeing the money flow back into that very well-established asset such as Bitcoin. So this is a really great time to evaluate where your money is, where you have it invested, and maybe focusing on really securing um, 
those well-established assets over time. So Mm. I like Venus in Taurus. I think it's such a beautiful, soothing time. Like we're shifting out of uh, Venus in Aries, which can be a little, there's a lot of passion, (laughs) but there's a little, a little too much sometimes. (laughs) So Taurus creates a bit more of that like stability, which is very nice. I think how it would, yeah, and I I really like Taurus energy. I think maybe as I get older, I really like Taurus energy. It feels like mm. like it feels very nourishing, and I think I've sort of made this distinction bef- in in previous episodes before. Like the way that I would describe Taurus is, um, in terms of money, is like it's wealth versus being rich. You know, there's a mm-hmm. there's a big difference mm-hmm. to me in that, and um. You know, Taurus is about wealth, like established, um, secure, grounded, um, and, and building that foundation rather than just like quick money, spending a lot, getting very excited about spending a lot. It's it's much more like nourishing and quality and luxury um, in that respect. So that's that energy and so beautiful with Venus in Taurus. It's It's a, yeah, beautiful time. Yeah, it is. So that's very exciting, very positive for the overall uh, economy. But again, just really, like you said, like just the, that stable asset that creates wealth. That's why this is not, not that I think it's ever really a great time for mean coins. This is a great time to not be in. I don't know. They've been doing really, they've been doing really well recently. I mean, some of yeah. these, I don't well, even know what they are. Cycle. Like, what is cat with hat or like dog? With oh my gosh! I know. Like, who? And I don't know. Like, I just I just got out of like that wallet, but I got airdropped cat cat with hat, and I was just like, mm, I'm gonna exit out of this wallet and shift everything out. So it's so I don't know if it's an actual coin, but regardless, you know, I really feel like the meme run is over when we really look at that cycle. Um, I don't know if we've ever spoken about it on here before, but just for general, in case uh, there's somebody here that doesn't know this. So we tend to see the phases of money flow from Bitcoin, then into Ethereum, then from Ethereum into altcoins, and then from altcoins into meme coins. And that's really like that end euphoria, excitement, like the memes are going crazy. And then that's when people start to take profits and shift it all back into Bitcoin. And that's when we see similar to what we're seeing right now in the market. So um, I think that phase is ending. I think from from just a price action point of view, not just an astrology point of view, like uh, this, this pullback is, is healthy. You know, we've, we've been, I've been hammering on about this for the last couple of episodes, but it's like, we needed a pullback. And the thing is the market is like really efficient at punishing greed and, and kind of punishing fear, like, and then it rewards courage. So like when everybody else is freaking out, um, oh my God, we're going back to 10K or something <laughs> from 70. Um, yeah. you know, the, um, it, it's your, your, you have the courage and the conviction to um, start buying. And mm-hmm. so that's, um, that's, I would actually really love to see Bitcoin um, by the time the full moon comes to have bottomed out around 50 or 52. Um, but I'm not sure that we're going to get there. Um, but, but let's see. Um, let's see, but I'm talking in terms of price action. I just would, would really like to see some of those imbalances, um, filled in. Um, but we shall see, we shall see. Agreed. 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 (laughs) Say that again. Sorry. We should have some, some limit orders in, um, if you, if you are wanting to stack some more sats at these levels, because yeah. um, it could very easily just wick down, like we saw it um, a couple of days ago, wick down to about 60K or 60,500 or something like that. And then it just um, went, you know, kind of like put quite quickly got bought back up. So yeah. Um, yeah, so have those limit orders in place if you are wanting to stack some more sats before the Bitcoin halving. Agreed, agreed. That's why 
uh, there's there's always pros to what sometimes seems to be a con, and this is most definitely the positive side of uh, of these. Um, I think, like you said, there's just a healthy pullback, you know, um, and it's nothing major when we zoom out. We're just like, oh, oh. it's just a little pullback. It's literally like nothing. I think it's um, about twenty percent or something, eighteen twenty percent. I think um, from but, but the old- from the all time high, yeah. It's about, yeah, about a 16, 17%. So yeah. no biggie. Yeah. So yep, yep. I think it's more it's that people are, are freaking out because they're looking at the altcoins because some of them have mm. come back quite substantially. But but that's what they, they do. Have. You know, that's what these altcoins do, especially the very low market caps. Like they have huge gains. You know, some of them have like 500 x since we haven't even gotten to the halving yet. And some of these have like 500 X, like some of these crazy small cap coins, but they also get absolutely annihilated when Bitcoin has a pullback. So you just have to be very, very careful. Um, I wouldn't recommend like over leveraging at this time. It's, it's, it's really not the time for that. And uh-huh. um, yeah, just being a bit, a bit careful and keeping your emotions and expectations in check as well. Um, yeah. But- we also have a full moon in Scorpio, um, so- which I'm excited to talk about because there's yeah. so many things that you've like just said. Mm-hmm. I literally almost like verbatim have them in my notes about what I'm seeing in Bitcoin for this full moon. Yeah. So I love the alignment, but please go ahead if you if you want to start saying something about the full moon in Scorpio before I dive into well, Bitcoin's just- chart. Scorpio was just like such interesting energy. And again, I think it's very misunderstood energy, actually. Like, and I think, um, you know, some people think it had like, it's like evil or dark or whatever. And Mm, it's not, it's like, um, but it is secretive. So there again, (laughs) like the revelation, a little bit like the eclipse energy, we could see some revelation of some secrets. So um, yeah, maybe some sudden disclosures or insights, particularly related to hidden or obscure um, financial matters like debt. Um, You know, those, I I think it's gonna be around global debt, to be honest. I think it's going to be um, some disclosures around that. I think it's gonna be some disclosures around the reality of the the um, unrealized losses that banks are sitting on. I think we're going to see some of that come through with this full moon um, and be re- revealed and maybe a spotlight be shone on that. Um, and you want to be careful around the Scorpio full moon. Again, we are still in, um, you know, we, we, we are looking at that Mercury retrograde finishing um so communication it's not the best time to be like hashing things out and communicating with people but um also with this Scorpio full moon you do have that like emotional decision making you can be very very emotional and um so it kind of like might lead to some volatility in the market with heightened emotional reactions from investors and market participants so causing some maybe dramatic swings in um, in market sentiment. So it's also, though, very sort of significant around these themes of transformation and renewal, which we are just getting over and over and over again. Um, you know, so it might, we might be looking at some um, restructuring or it might be a good time to, learn those lessons that you learned in the eclipse and maybe look at your portfolio and restructure it and make sure it's a little more balanced with, um, you know, a good portion of Bitcoin, some Ethereum, some, you know, all of these, make sure there's a balance and you have some more stable assets as, as um, Corinne said as well. And um, also being driven by a deeper understanding of what is truly valuable and what is sustainable. So again, that kind of like leads into that, like um, we're, we're not called the crypto Zodiac, we're, we're called the Bitcoin Zodiac. And um, so like that obviously is 
our focus and the reason that, that that is our focus is because of its fundamental values, its key features of 21 million limited supply. Um, a quote from Natalie Brunel on her recent debate with Peter Schiff is, you know, Bitcoin is rules, unchangeable, immutable rules without rulers. And so, you know, that's that's the sustainability factor that we see for Bit that makes Bitcoin different from everything else. And so, yeah, you want to kind of be coming from that point of view as well. And side note, Natalie Brunel absolutely killed it in this debate. Peter Schiff talking about gold, Natalie Brunel talking about um, Bitcoin, and she just did such an amazing job so elegantly. And um I mean, she's an Emmy award-winning journalist. She she is media trained for sure, but it's so incredible when you see someone just like walking in their gifting. Like she's such a gift to the Bitcoin community. And um, yeah, I highly recommend that anybody go who hasn't seen it, go check that out. And um, yeah, have a look at her debate about Bitcoin versus gold. She is, she's such a queen. Mm. Like, that was amazing. like, divine feminine walking in her purpose it's yeah. so beautiful so cool and we're very lucky that we get her in the bitcoin community so yeah <laughs> yeah um i love that yeah. aspect of like nothing wasted you know because she had such she had such an amazing career as a journalist um mm -hmm. you know in the in the media and she's that there's never anything wasted when you when you change direction and move towards your passion. Like it's like those yeah. giftings that she gleaned through all of that experience and now being channeled into the Bitcoin community. Like what a blessing. I think she's Scorpio. I think when we think interviewed her. Yeah. yeah, I think when we interviewed her and for anybody that missed that, that was actually one of like our, our very, I think she was our very first guest here on the Bitcoin mm -hmm. Zodiac. Go back and check out. It's just the audio. Um, yeah. but highly recommend. Yeah, she's and we talked a little bit about her astrology, so she's great. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I and also to add on what you were saying about this this full moon in Scorpio is that the next two moons that we have, so full moon uh in Scorpio on the 23rd of April, and then the following new moon on the 7th of May is Taurus. These moons are happening on that uh, economy and money axes. So Taurus and Scorpio literally rule money. Um, and so that's, and also like, you know, uh, Taurus rules the second house and Scorpio rules the eighth house. And that uh, even from a personal astrology standpoint, that is your houses that represent money investments your economy so um that's pretty powerful stuff that is coming up you know aligned within all these Taurus aspects it's just it's a very important period of time so I would say like let's really be locked in Bitcoin Zodiac family and let's like really be present with uh, with everything that's coming up in these uh in these next couple of weeks um let's looking stack specifically, build some wealth. let's stack sats amen um let's actually look at the and i'll share here again so just the transit that's coming up specifically for bitcoin um during this time so um, here we're looking at Bitcoin specifically at the 100% uh, full moon. So we see the sun there in Taurus, whereas we have the moon in, in Scorpio. And so we can see that the moon is occurring in the fourth house and the fourth house is related to all things earth resources and mining as well. Mm -hmm. So if there was any other place to have a full moon in, uh, there couldn't be a better place for the full moon to occur, right? As we have the Bitcoin halving, um, mm. because I think this really is marking like, hey, Bitcoin halving is happening. Um, and this is where the attention is being uh, put right now. Then the other interesting thing is that we both have the sun and the moon squared, the natal mercury of Bitcoin. And this is giving us that heads up around 
news and news around the Bitcoin halving. I think there is going to be a lot of false, misleading, confusing information that comes up. Mm. And we're already seeing it with this drop. Like we said, if you have been in the crypto space for a while and when you really zoom out, we know that this is not a big, significant drop. But already the headlines are like, Approaching the Bitcoin halving, Bitcoin crashes to $64,000. And you're like, <laughs> maybe that's a little overreacting. And we're not trying to gaslight you. That's just a little overreacting. <laughs> um, so that's just like confusing information. So be very aware of that because that will come up. Now with continuing with the moon being specifically in Scorpio, we could see a bit of that shadow side of Scorpio, which like you were saying, it is mysterious. And there can be, again, this is just the shadow side. It can also be a little sneaky um, mm -hmm. and maybe has other intentions that are not being shown on the surface. So I feel like when I dive deeper into the overall astrology as well, this is why I'm bringing up this shadow side, because I do feel like there is a manipulative shake out period occurring here. Right. I do feel like, as you know, we've been talking about the astrology for Bitcoin just looks so good. The stars are aligning, but as it's doing that, and as everything starts to look like sunshines and rainbows, they come to shake everybody out. And it's being very much represented right now in the astrology because they want to stack sats. They want your Bitcoin. They want us to sell Bitcoin so that they can get more of um, more of those, those sats. And I actually read a quote yesterday, which is um, liquid uh, liquidations are a forced transfer of wealth from yeah. traders who need leverage to what wealthy spot buyers right and this is exactly what's happening right now so mm -hmm. let's really pay attention to that um also like we said so we have that jupiter uranus conjunction occurring in taurus which is still you know quite prominent on the 23rd um however for bitcoin specifically I mean, it's got a beautiful trine with Saturn, but it has a bit more of a challenging square with the with Neptune. So mm -hmm. that's challenging square with Neptune specifically for Bitcoin is kind of, again, giving a bit of a warning of pay extra attention around this time. Don't, like Claire said, let's not go super crazy leverage around this time. Don't take any large risks. And also don't fall for the easy, quick money around this time. I'm bringing it back to those Taurus Venus themes. Yeah. Let's really look at those things for the long run during this time. Whereas that positive aspect with Saturn, you know, this is this is showing us in Saturn. I always think of like the wise old man that's like, yes, Bitcoin, like we've got to go through this period. Let's like restabilize. Let's get ourselves really solidly prepared before we continue on. I always kind of think of like, you know, uh, as an entrepreneur and as I've gone through my journey, sometimes, and you know, as an excited entrepreneur too, it's like we always think that like, or especially at the start, we're like, we always want things going up. It's like we always want the uptrend. We always want to be bullish. And as soon as you have a little bit of a pullback and you have that restabilizing moment, which is an invitation to resettle everything make sure that your foundations are strong and solid your teams are good your business is good your systems are good to then progress and go towards those all-time highs mm. that's kind of the energy that we're feeling right now and that's being very much shown with um this really positive aspect with um bitcoin's natal saturn so that's super exciting. And just the last thing that I'll point out on this as well is that we do have the the full moon, so sun and moon, with these positive aspects to the natal uh, Pluto, as well as the natal Mars as well. So they're both uh, very close and they um, have these positive aspects with this full moon. And this as well, kind of to summarize, is kind of like with the Pluto, it's this deep recognition or this deep reflection of the meaning of life. So like what Bitcoin's meaning is 
as it prepares for that next run, like Pluto is very deep. It's like generational. It's the depths of you. So I think that's a really great indication for a good time to look for those buys as we prepare for the upcoming run. And then with that Mars, a positive aspect as well, you know, like Mars is that passion, that excitement, that impulse. Mm -hmm. And like Claire said earlier, this is a sign to get courageous, to step into that courage, even though things might look like, oh no, but like Bitcoin's coming down. We're seeing these pullbacks. There's outs that are having a significant pullback. That's okay. This is the time to be courageous, to step back into our trading plans, to step back into the, wait, what's the wider vision? What is the overall uh, percentages even that I want in my portfolio? And this is the time to step back into that courage before we prepare for, for that takeoff. So yeah. there are some challenges. It's not going to be smooth. It never is, right? Otherwise boring. Nobody wants to watch a movie where everything just works out perfectly. Like the superhero has to have its challenges as they go along. Um, but good wins in the end. So it's always a happy ending. <laughs> yeah. Totally. And I think in these times of like really great volatility, we just have to look at it objectively. And, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day, like market makers on the other side of your trade, I've said this before, but they, they make their money by taking yours. Like that's the reality. And yeah. so there are always going to be these shakeouts and, and the markets themselves are this kind of like great equalizer or this great reminder. They are, for us to be able to progress forward in a healthy way, we have to clear the greed out of the market. We have to have that wake up call. And so it's always going to be this period of expansion and some contraction, expansion and contraction. And that is the same as I was saying at the beginning in terms of life, like it's some growth and then we get pruned a little bit some growth again and and that's just the way that we um we can move forward in a really healthy way as well like it's impossible to move forward in any other way and um that is what a bull run is like people are, get so freaked out when there is a pullback in a bull run and it's like well actually they're more aggressive than in a bear market generally you know so yeah. um yeah so do be prepared for that if it is freaking you out take a little um take some profits and take some money off the table um yes. i do encourage you on these pullbacks that you know lean in i you know i've been looking at building my alt portfolio you guys know i've been talking about this um or not building it but adding more to it and um so these i just these pullbacks i see as opportunities to to jump into some projects that were just at a level that I thought was unreasonable, were too expensive at the time. I thought they'd they'd gone up too much. And so I'm happy to see some of these projects pull back and we'll we'll pick some up ready for the other side of the halving too. So yeah, wow. just look at everything objectively. Wow. Feel all your feelings. Um, make sure you feel all your feelings. All my intuitive, sen you know, s sensitive beings. Um, yeah, absolutely. Lean into that. Lean into your intuition and um yeah. Peace, love, and Bitcoin. <laughs> Peace, love, and Bitcoin. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Bitcoin Zodiac podcast. We hope you enjoyed our discussions about the evolution of Bitcoin viewed through the lens of financial astrology. This podcast does not offer financial advice, so please make sure you do your own research. And stay tuned for our next episode where we will continue to dive deeper and build off these perception-expanding topics. Remember, whatever your beliefs may be, we all have something to learn from each other. So stay curious, stay open-minded, and keep exploring the world of Bitcoin and astrology. As always, may the stars align in your favor and your crypto investments prosper. Until next time, peace, love, and Bitcoin.